can I ask you, because you know Francis very well, do you think he has a chance? The man known as the Predator. Uh, not only a chance, I believe he's going to win. Come on, Alistair. What the hell? Really? For the boxing world, they will be disappointed. A scary man, but Tyson's a scary man, isn't he? It's a total mismatch. Very small puncher's chance. Fight fans, welcome back. I bet, I bet everything I love. <laughs> The lights were supposed to be too bright. This is this is as big as it's probably ever gonna get for Francis Ngannou. The pressure, too intense. He doesn't look nervous. And the golf and skill, too vast. He just won that round. He South won Port. that round. Southpaw. But with otherworldly resilience, spirit, and composure. What I will say though, is Francis Ngannou hits like a freight train. Correct. Came a harrowing reality check straight out of the trash talk gone wrong textbook it's, it's like he got woken up from a bad dream as a dream event quickly became a nightmare to reveal a newly humbled champion and a terrifying new heavyweight threat if that guy gets six months of some serious technical training he gonna be a nightmare for the rest of those guys i'm telling you here from the perspectives of onlookers training partners and past opponents we look at the scary reality of fighting Francis Ngannou. I'm pretty sure that man is capable of turning hands or feet or any limb off your body. He's that strong. Oh, Ngannou's chin is just, like, he's one of those freak of natures. I think that threw Tyson Fury off as well. I was thinking, flipping heck, I have just nailed this guy. He did not budge. Cut it out. Rose up from the bottom, made our own route. As the well-known quote goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. I once stated that I could drink 15 pints of beer and still beat Anthony Joshua in a fight. So I'm going to go on record and say this. I could drink 25 pints of beer and still beat Francis Ngannou in a fight. And whilst he's no stranger to getting punched in the face... When he went flying and then flatlined and, and laid back, I was like, it's over, I can't believe he knocked him out in the 12th round. And I'm going to knock him out and I'll knock him out in a cage too if he wants that. Not a problem. One thing we have always given Tyson Fury credit for, even in adversity, is the fact that he's always had a plan. He gave plan away the first time because he wasn't good enough to do anything about it. Whether it's to press his opponent towards uncomfortable pressure. Fury still looking for that one more big shot which could end it. Stick behind his jab, move and play it long. He was expecting this. That's better. In behind the jab. Or to bite down and turn it into a dogfight. Another strong right uppercut by Fury and I just see the bigger man really taking control. Who did it better? Nobody! Ever! However, on a night when nobody expected it, against an opponent he couldn't really prepare for, Fury found himself on the back foot, being pressed and quickly running out of options. He really couldn't get respect from Ngannou. Ngannou was walking through shots like, like nothing. Ngannou took it well, Fury landing again. Did you sense a change in his attitude towards you? That maybe he thought it was going to go a certain way and it wasn't going that way. His attitude was changing. Basically, when I was changing to Sao Paulo, he wasn't doing anything. When the former baddest man on the planet spoke praise of Francis in the buildup, and alongside head coach Dewey Cooper detailed some harrowing sparring stories, it sounded, in all honesty, like an exaggerated PR move. And when first when this came to me, I said, there's no way this is going to happen. And then I watched him spar. He was sparring different guys. He was knocking everybody out in camp. He knocked out like three guys in the same sparring session. All heavyweight boxers, uh, heavyweight MMA guys. He hit this guy. I don't know what sparring by some white guy. He hit him. But not only did he hit him, he broke his leg when he went down. And I said, man, there's a possibility something good could happen here. Don't say it can't happen. Watch the fight October 28 and watch history being made. The world's biggest upset ever in boxing will happen. Francis Ngannou will get his hand raised. How does he, I mean, of course you haven't worked with Wilder or other people, but how does his power stack up with heavyweight boxers? He has even called out Tyson Fury in the past, so how would you kind of compare his punching power to one of the top heavyweight boxers? Ah! I hold pads for a really exciting heavyweight right now, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. I've held pads for Eric Molina. 
I feel power from a lot of different guys. I'm the first guy to say that MMA fighters punching power aren't equivalent. They're not on the same level. Boxers punch much harder. But this is a whole different level. Trust me when I tell you this. The Predator Francis got power and it's just it's unrealistic. It's, it's like from a movie. He can crack. It's a natural pop to it. And uh, fighting someone like Francis Ngannou is definitely a different animal. He's a real puncher, guys. He's a real danger when it comes to punching power. And the more technique he puts into it, it'll even be greater. To UFC champion, and now, like, you know, I thought he won the fight. But hindsight can be a crazy thing. And now Joe Joyce's praise earlier in the year, highlighting Francis's power and ability, serves as a chilling reminder. So when you and Francis and Garnick um, pictured together, what can you tell me about that spot? I inspired Joe Joyce in um, Las Vegas about four or five years ago. You know, he's got quite fast hands and very powerful shots. And Garnick is strong. I remember when sparring him, like they were going whistling. <laughs> Whistling past my body, whistling past my head. Yeah, you could listen. Joe Joyce is a superior boxer. He's been boxing for ages, but you can see the power of Ngannou, and that's what Tyson's got to be very wary of. I wouldn't like to take any cleanly. I can take a bite, but no, he's a strong guy, mate. Don't pull your hand back too much. Just dig it. Yeah. Ooh. Other warning beacons in the boxing world came from Carlos Takam and Kamaru Usman's not so little brother, Mohammed. When I say yeah, France is going to win the fight, people think I'm a joke, you know? What's the power? Like, I mean, Deontay Wilder gets very hard. They say France got no, France, France, power. No, France's power is crazy, bro. It's really crazy. Seriously. You felt his power? Yes. How hard does he hit? I cannot say nothing about that. <laughs> I can't say nothing about that. He catch me in the, in the corner in the ring. He start to punch me, like, I say, Francis, come on, man, come down. I say, it's an exhibition. He say, I don't give a <laughs> hey man, Francis has been looking for you, man. He wants to grapple with you. He said, looking for me? I said, oh, okay. So he's like, yeah, let's do a little clinch work. We're just going a little bit. And then you just felt the shift change. And it started getting harder. It started getting harder. And it's like, okay. I just, I could feel everybody watching us. And I'm like, I felt this guy, you know? And nothing against him because he's a monster. But I know where I'm at. You said he, he liked to hit hard and inspiring. How hard does he hit, man? Oh, man, he's an animal. <laughs> this is real. You have a big, uh, a big knockout point. But sparring is sparring, and stepping in against the predator for real is something very different. He hits anybody on this earth flush in the face, that thing's over. Because of the way Francis dispatches his victims, the aftermath and undertones have always been the same. The power, I mean, it's power, I guess. A uh, very strong guy, yeah. punches hard. Donald has a lot of power on his hands. I know better than most, he hits very, very hard. Nobody knocks people out like Francis since Mike Tyson. This guy is a phenomenal fighter. That's what I was saying right before the fight. Hey, I'm like, this been... is the scariest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> Frightening finishes, paired with post-fight renditions that would suit a campfire and a flashlight. You know, he goes out there and just touches guys barely on the chin. They fall down, cover up. Sounding more like horror stories than interviews. All he needs is one shot, and it right. sounds like a cliche at this point. Yeah. But really, the first time he connects, you crumble, you go down. He didn't even know where he was, so they just asked me to let him go uh, to have a, a medical care. Since there is rarely any bad blood, I want to take my uh, open hand. We'll make the fight happen. Past opponents have always given credit where it's due, rather than downplaying the predator's abilities. You, you got a chance to feel the power. How does it stack up to other fighters that you faced? I give him that. He was definitely strong. A lot stronger than I thought he was going to be. You know, I knew he was going to be strong, but he kept the strength for a while. Yeah, it's a lot of power. You know, I connect the hand and it's done. Yeah, one more victim. And whilst the majority have highlighted the resilience of the Cameroonian, it's the power, the strength, and the striking abilities that remains Francis Ngannou's fear factor. They fight different with him than they do with anybody else because the, the consequences are so grave. The consequences are so grave, so everyone's scared. It's, it's tough to come back into this sport, especially against an animal like Francis Ngannou, and uh, you know, he had a rough night. What is 
After all, the words of others are always more scary than a man who hypes himself up. I'm, I'm calm, but I'm the type to where, no, I didn't do enough. I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta right. do this. But you were calm. Like, wh where's that from? Where do you get that in inner calmness from? Francis has always had very little to say before the opening bell, especially in terms of trash talk. It's not an easy fight, my friend. If you ever fight in your life, you will know that it's not an easy fight. But finds plenty of ways to express himself where it matters most. And I said that's what heavyweight champs do. They do heavyweight championship. When they don't have no more left, they keep going. Reserved in character, but fluent in violence. And Francis Ngannou, I'll be honest, like, you know, he's a very powerful guy. And if he connects, he can knock any man out alive. I've never met a scarier individual. But it's not even like Mayweather McGregor. This Tyson Fury right now is in his prime. He won't be touched. You were the underdog. How much did that motivate you tonight? I don't care to be the underdog. I, underdog. I mean, uh, I born as underdog. This contrast is most likely what made Nganu a nightmare for Fury. The Gypsy King enjoys playing the underdog, acting foolish, and getting under his opponent's skin with his sharp tongue. Is that what like a fighter's body? Clearly not. You ever before? No. Have a look. Great the <laughs> However, considering the long line of killers that Francis has already overcome, the trash talk felt empty and more of a charade. I guess that you boy. I guess that you boy. It's like a tennis table champion facing Djokovic in Wimbledon final. Totally different. But if I lose to an MMA guy, I'm never going to be able to show my face in public again. It's going to be ridiculed. People are going to chuck it at me forever. So there's more riding on this than there ever has been before. It still served a purpose, though, as the millions tuned in to see the baddest fight the baddest. Look at me. Look at my stomach. I'm a fat pig. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> You're not the number one boxer, and that's who I'm gonna be focused on. I'm not going to focus on the fat pig. <laughs> Karma in action. When you overlook your opponent, sometimes shit happens. Tick tock, Tyson. Tick tock. Francis is coming for you. Everyone has underestimated this man. Bombers Gypsy King. King already has his next fight book. He's looking past them. That's a big mistake. Putting power aside, the thing that makes Francis even more daunting is his ability to adapt and surprise on the biggest of stages. Showed all the plus. You just did some stuff that we were confident you could not do. His aggressive striking took the UFC by storm, but then he surprised us with takedown defense and ground game against Stipe. The moment Francis Ngannou defended that takedown, most of the wrestlers I know around the country. He shocked us with grappling against Gunn. High level wrestlers texted me and goes, this fight is over. He did win the last rounds. He did change his game plan. He did find a way to win a fight that had nothing to do with the punches or kicks. And now he's taken it one step further, switching stance and landing clean against boxing's very best. And Ganu didn't look like a first timer. He looked like someone who is a, is a actu an actual boxer, not an MMA guy making the transition, which is why I'm looking forward to seeing him in the boxing ring again. One of the most courageous and greatest performances I have seen by an athlete outside of their realm of expertise. Like, I never thought to myself that I would see Ngannou outboxing Tyson at points in the fight, he definitely did. The fact that Francis stayed out of range, maintained his composure, didn't bite on any of the feints that we were seeing from Tyson Fury. I'm not exaggerating at all when I say this, promise. Cross my heart, I'm not exaggerating. I'm in, still in a state of disbelief. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about it. But he has become, become overnight an instant player in, in, in boxing. Oh. It's far-fetched, but if you build Nganu bit by bit... If you were going to go into a lab and design a perfect heavyweight... You're basically adding Wilder's power Joe Joyce's chin and Chisora's grit onto an Anthony Joshua-esque frame. Crazy freak athleticism, fast as shit for heavyweight, knock anybody dead with one punch. And people are like, you're asking for too much. Combine this with the fear of the unknown and you have an extremely dangerous heavyweight. If I was in Ganu, I would tell him, you're going to make so much money in boxing. Yeah. And I think he might be able to beat them all. 
I think he's that good. Even in defeat, the baddest man on the planet Torch rightfully belongs to Francis Ngannou. And with only one man left to really dispute that... Francis Ngannou is the baddest man on the planet. 100%, 1000%. The world awaits the Cameroonian's next step. This is a guy that has legitimized himself in this space. There are plenty of options for him now. He has become not just the face of MMA, but maybe the face of fight sports world over. However, the eyes and facial expressions of Tyson Fury spoke a thousand words on October 28th about the scary reality of facing Francis Ngannou.